Hi everyone, I am here with tonight's Christmas story. So we're going to start, of course, with our Advent calendar. And for December 23rd, 2020, if you followed a guiding star, where would it take you? So I said, two days till Christmas, guys. Two. Two days. Always seems like it comes so fast. All right. So here's the picture for the story tonight. It is called Book of Love. And what book could be more of love than the Holy Bible? All right. So this one is by... Carlene Schaff from Riverview, Michigan. Book of Love. It was the last thing she expected to find. All right. Growing up, I didn't understand what alcoholism was how it can smother the goodness in a person. I only knew that dad's drinking meant tears for my mother and insecurity for us kids. And it meant we shouldn't expect anything special. Christmas was the expectation, exception, sorry. Christmas was the exception. It wouldn't be normal if I didn't mess up. We could ask for the one thing we had been longing for all year. When I was 10 years old, my Christmas wish was for a white Bible with a zippered cover. You know of any 10 year old little girl, or boy for that matter, that would ask for Christmas a Bible. How sweet. Another girl in our church had one, and I thought it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I have a red one with a zipper cover. My aunt gave it to me. She had it, she got it in the 1960s and gave it to me and I'm going to pass it on when I, you know, I'm not sure when, maybe soon. When Christmas came, though there was no white Bible, doesn't dad care about me, I thought, blinking back tears. I looked at him, but he wouldn't meet my gaze. A neighbor dropped by later and asked if I'd gotten my wish. I couldn't stop myself from telling her. Every time I go to the store, she said, I'll bring you back the change. You'll have your Bible before you know it. The day I reached my goal, I ran to the bookstore and picked out the Bible I wanted. I even had my name printed in gold on the cover. I used that Bible until it wasn't white anymore and the binding had to be taped. When I went to college, our church gave me a new Bible, so I took the old one away at home. While I was at school, Dad's drinking binges escalated. My mother and younger siblings had to flee the house and leave everything behind. I refused to have any contact with Dad after that. I couldn't let go of the hurt and anger I had toward him. Some years later, I received a phone call telling me Dad had died. Apparently, things had gotten so bad at the end that he'd been living out of his car. Now, on top of the hurt and anger, there was grief for the man lost to drink and for the loving father I wished we could have, he could have been. After the funeral, I went through Dad's few remaining possessions. Inside an old cardboard box was a carefully tied with string. I found my white Bible. I unzipped the cover. Snapshots spilled into my lap. Pictures of my mother, my brothers and sisters and me. Smudged and dog-eared, I flashed back to the Christmas morning when Dad wouldn't meet my eye. 
maybe holding on to my Bible and our pictures was his way of making up for all the love he had wanted to give us but wasn't able to. It was time to lay the past to rest, hugging my old white zippered Bible tightly to my chest. I released my hurt and my anger and my grief and gave it all to God, the Father who loved me when my earthly one could not. This is another part to it called Granted by Edward Brennan. If only Carlin Schaff's dad had discovered the serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the thing I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. If he had only discovered the serenity prayer in the organization and it's most closely associated with Alcoholics Anonymous, whose members often recite it in unison at the end of meetings. I was one of the fortunate ones, though I didn't know it at first. I wanted to stop drinking, but wanted nothing to do with a God I didn't care to believe in. That gave me a problem with the prayer. Then, don't say God, my sponsor said demissively. He's not going to be offended. I took the advice and omitted his name when I stood at the conclusion of a meeting, grasping hands with the persons on either side of me. I didn't let myself think too hard about whom I was beseeching for serenity just so long as I didn't give in to the G word. I even, God, I even practiced outside the meeting so I wouldn't slip up. So why did this prayer seem to keep me out of trouble? It centered me in situations where I'd normally reach for a mood changer. I wondered if maybe it would work even better if I added God. I experimented, and that was the beginning of my spiritual awakening. AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, found Bill Wilson said about the serenity prayer, never have we seen so much AA packed into so few words. And I might add, Never has so much God been packed in to so few words. Amen. And here's a picture beside of it, just a, you know, one of these little ex experts here. They wrote, um, The joy of a happy kitchen, a French proverb, where love sets the table, food tastes at its best. And it's just cups of little coffee cups. Alright guys, so that was our Christmas story for tonight. I'm going to go through this book and figure out the rest of these. Okay, the next Christmas story, which God willing will be tomorrow, is called Gather Round. And it's got a recipe with it. A couple recipes actually. That's why I don't know if a lot of these, the rest of these few are just uh, recipes or they're actual stories. That's why I'll have to, you know, go check it out here before tomorrow. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible, another Bible reading, another Bible study, and another Christmas story. I'm going to get off here right now and I'm going to go read the real Christmas story of Jesus right after this. Bye guys. God bless you.